Hello guys and welcome back to another video. Now in the past couple of weeks I've seen a lot of comments about people expecting a certain range to be in their car but it's not there anymore then they start talking about battery degradation all of a sudden uh, while it's not necessarily the case and uh, in this video I will try to uh, clarify a few things about the battery management system, the calibration, the battery uh, pack balancing in itself and of course how to actually measure your actual degradation of your battery pack. So let's dive into it. Now let's start talking about the cell or pack balancing that is happening inside the car. Now it is constantly happening and the cells are constantly being balanced, more or less. Um, but the balancing is also why uh, the last percentage that you are doing, that you are charging, is taking forever to do. And sometimes it's even at 100% and it still says that it's charging um, for 20 minutes, uh, even maybe. So what is happening in reality is if you have a perfect situation, then it looks like this. So all your battery cells, so imagine we have 20 cells in this case, are uh, at 100%. That's the ideal situation that we want to be at. But what happens in reality is that after some time and after uh, not having charged to 100% completely, for a longer time is that the cells tend to be a little bit different in, in their reaction. You also have a little bit of degradation, which is cell specific. And then you get something like this, where some cells are filled to 100% and other cells are like 96, 98, 97, 99. Um, it's a little bit all over the place. And this is where your battery is saying, okay, I'm actually full, right? But uh, I still have a little bit of room. So what needs to happen is that at the very top end, the cells will actually be balanced. And that means that it's, uh, you have to look at it as kind of communicating vessels, right? The same principle. So one cell is going to be uh, depleted a little bit while the, or uncharged, uh, a little bit to fill up the other one. So in the end, we end up with every battery at 99% and then we can add that very last 1% that uh, we need. So that is what is actually happening with the battery uh, pack balancing. It is completely different from what is called the battery management system calibration. Um, the battery management system has an algorithm that keeps track of the top and bottom of your pack. So it knows that 100% is roughly that amount of kilowatt hours depending on the battery pack that you have. And zero is roughly, uh, let's say, the, the, the low end buffer that you still have of a couple of kilowatt hours as protection of the battery pack. So that is what the algorithm is constantly calculating. And now there is a way that you can bring back uh, the lost miles uh, on your car by balancing the BMS, especially if you've been charging and a lot of people have been doing that in the, uh, in the COVID crisis. Now, not a lot of people have driven uh, many miles, have, have driven short distances uh, on a daily basis, uh, and they are just charging very short charging sessions between 50 and 70 percent, 50 and 80, 40, 60, something like that. Um, and then basically the battery management system starts to lose the actual top and bottom. And there is a way to calibrate that. And that goes in uh, four steps, basically. So the first step is going to be that you need to drive your car down to the single digit uh, state of charge, preferably like around 5%, maybe up to 3%, but don't really go lower than that because you need to let the car rest for at least a couple of hours. It's two to three hours, but the car needs to go into a deep sleep. 
That means at that point, the contactors are opened and an open contactor means there is no f current flowing uh, on the high voltage circuits. So the computers are not powered at that point and it's only the battery. So you have no additional drain. And at that point, the battery can determine the zero point um, of, of the pack. Then you charge as a second step or it's already a third step because you need to leave. The second step was leaving it for a couple of hours. The third step is to slowly charge it all the way up to 100%. Now, above 90% is okay, but it is recommended to do 100%. Why? Because of that balancing that is going to happen also at the very top end. So the balancing is happening all the time, as I mentioned. The cells are kind of like the communicating vessels, but not... 100%. So it's at that 100% that you do the last perfect perfection step basically on the uh, cell balancing. Uh, that is why it's recommended to charge to 100%. Now as soon as you charge to 100% you also need to let the car sleep again. So again contactors will be open at that point and you need to leave it there for two to three hours. Uh, so it goes again into deep sleep it can calculate the high point of the battery pack. And that is basically what you need to do to calibrate your BMS. Now be careful, once you charge to 100%, do not leave the car for a long time charged at 100%. So after those couple of hours that you've uh, waited, uh, take a short drive, drive it down to below 95% at least, and uh, make sure that the car doesn't stay at 100% for a long time because that is not healthy for the battery either. So that is how you calibrate the BMS. Now, in some cases, you need to repeat this step like two or three times if you have a really bad miscalibration. Now, how does this miscalibration happen? As I mentioned, there's an algorithm that learns while charging and it's different for each car because it learns from your charging habits. So if you charge only small increments, then it will calculate the full width or the full potential of the battery based on a very small increment. So the margin on there is a lot higher. Uh, if you do a slight miscalculation, it grows exponentially as you go to a very small uh, charging session. Now, if you regularly charge from 20 to 90%, like I'm doing, uh, you will have less of an effect uh, on the actual displayed kilometers or miles on your car versus the actual um, original miles uh, and what is actually available inside your battery pack. Now that brings us also to the final point, which is the battery degradation. So because of lithium plating, because of the usage, because of heat, because of chemistry changes due to many charges, the driving habits, uh, and so on, uh, the battery does degrade. And, and Tesla is saying that um, the battery is retaining about 90% of its capacity after 200,000 miles of usage. So that's over 320,000 kilometers uh, that you can drive. And then you still have over 90% or roughly 90% with uh, the standard deviation around it. Now, the deviation does not include the outliers, which are there, of course, as well. Um, but also, this is what Tesla is saying. Now, Martin Steinbuch is a Dutch professor, I think. He uh, started gathering data from Belgian and Dutch uh, people that entered their data in a spreadsheet on a regular basis. And uh, he also came to basically the same conclusion. So this is his data, and if you look at it, that graph is kind of following the same path as what Tesla is showing us. So again, if you look here at the 200,000 mile mark, then that is 90%. If you look at the 50,000 mile mark, that is 95%. If you take a closer look, this is a zoomed in view of the same data, then indeed 50,000 miles, that's 95% and uh, roughly about 90% with 200,000 miles. And that matches exactly with what Tesla has um, 
actually uh, put out in their uh, report for 2020. So it's really interesting to see that um, what Tesla is putting out, it, it's, they're not lying about it, right? It, it matches the real world data that other people are gathering. So that's cool. And um, having still 90% of your uh, battery capacity after 200,000 miles is awesome because not a lot of people drive 200,000 miles in a very short amount of time. So your car will last many, many, many years with the same battery pack. So that is not a problem, but how do you actually measure it? Now you can't go by that number that you see on the dash because that number is based on a constant for your car, depending on the options that you have, the battery pack that you have, the revision of the battery pack that you have and so on. So there is a fixed constant that is being used to calculate that number on the dash. Also, the, it takes into account a little bit of the degradation that Tesla is calculating based on increased resistance in the battery pack and so on. So it's going to be different for each car, but it's only going to be slightly different uh, for each car with the same battery pack. Now, that number or that constant has changed over time. So with each update, Tesla can, they don't do it with every update, but they can potentially update that constant. And that has happened in the past several times already. So you can't really compare the original value that you have. And then 20 updates later, you say, okay, I have this lower value uh, because Tesla adjusted the constant for your car to be more in line with what is realistic and what is your real world driving expectation. So how do we calculate it then? Well, you can't calculate what is going into a battery because there are all kinds of chemical processes. You have heat dissipation and so on. So you can't really measure what you're getting into the battery. You can only measure what you're getting out of the battery. So that means that if you want to compare it, then Preferably, you would have the original uh, car with the original battery when it was brand new and you would have done the same test uh, already. But what you need to do is, again, go down to close to zero, charge it to 100% to get that complete BMS calibration, to get that balancing going on so you have the full potential of your pack. And then in one trip, you actually need to drive it down to 5% or lower. Um, the remaining percentages can be calculated based on what you already drove on that trip, but the bigger your remainder is, the bigger the error margin is going to be. Now, in this case, that also means that um, you drive to below 5%, and that gives you on the computer exactly how many kilowatt hours that you charged or that you uh, used from the battery pack. And that is in one go, so there is no vampire drain, there is no losses uh, from preheating or pre-cooling the car. Um, and because that is not displayed on the screen. On the screen, you only see what is consumed during driving. So HVAC is included, radio is included, um, whatever you're doing, uh, your driving style is included. Uh, but those things, uh, the, the HVAC is not included on that display when you're standing still and the car is in park, for example. So you need to drive it down in one go and then you see how many kilowatt hours that you actually have used from your battery. And that is uh, exactly what is the usable capacity of your battery. And if you do that on separate uh, or in separate times, on separate occasions, then you can make your own graph of the actual degradation of your battery. So yeah, there you have it. I hope you found this interesting. So if you see lower than expected numbers of the uh, mileage that you have on your car, then please do this system to recalibrate your battery management system. And then uh, everything should be fine and you should be able to regain a few of those lost miles. As always, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and make sure you click that little bell icon so you don't miss out on any new videos. And for now, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one. Bye bye.